Hi there. How you doing in the name of Jesus Christ? It's Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. My teeth are pink because this is a filter. Yes, that's what's good. I'm not actually with shades on my body, on my face, but I like the look. It is what it is and we're running with it. Did I say I hope you're peachy? I hope you're stellar. I hope you're in a neat little bunch. All that jazz. Alrighty, so let's just get straight into this because straight into it is what we need to do. If my teeth are giving pink, it's only because this lipstick is coming off. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, alternatively, you could be gawking at Animated for Jesus, in which case, hello, it's Animated for Jesus. Mm, alrighty, yes. Um, where shall I commence? Look, there's a lot to talk about, so talk about it we shall. Let's just get straight into the gist of the matter. Uh, hello to my white car sunscreen. Don't give me grief, it is what it is these days. I'm gonna double about much. And then as for my creased shirt, it's a look. Let's just deal. Ain't nobody actually got time to be ironing no shirts because life sucks. And my creased shirt is very, very similar to me. So it is what it is. I'm wearable and yet I'm creased. But don't underestimate me because I am a force to be reckoned with because that's just what Jesus has seen it fit to do with me. Okay. We are gonna discuss a matter or two. We gotta. Um, because if I don't talk, if I don't have these discussions, I'm not gonna be okay. My life is just not gonna work out well, and that, that's just gonna be a shame. So, let's not go out like that. Mm. Whoa, look at that. Every single time I drink coffee, that glasses like fall off my face, and it's just, yeah, it looks weird. But it's okay. Because at the end of the day, don't nobody care what's important is what I'm saying and not so much the filter with the shades. Amen. Yo, you know what? I'm on my period. My ministry, really largely, is carved out for women. So if men are here and they're feeling disquieted by the fact that I just said I'm on my period, I did manufacture this whole ministry for the very purpose of speaking sense into some females. And they don't tend to have issues with being communicated to that somebody's on their period for the day. So, I don't know. Just take it, okay? Don't, don't get harsh. Anyway, whatever. I'm on my period. That's relevant. I gotta mention it. It's the second day of my period. I started yesterday. And I just want to describe to you what in the world is going on. Like, I am harassed. I'm lambasted by what I call settle real quick or else witchcraft. And I'm like, alright, alright, okay. Of course, I mean, y'all know that I'm all about that business of just talking about stuff when it happens. So let's just talk about it. Settle real quick or else, witchcraft. It's called that. Settle real quick or else. There's, there's no other word for it. Settle real fast or else. And we're going to discuss settle real fast or else. <clears throat> but the discussion encircling my period is also imperative to highlight. I can. Mamelang. That means listen in my language. I'm on my period. Okay. Did, that, did I just have a glitch on my phone? I, I cannot be having glitches. Like, don't give me glitch. Just don't. Ugh. Anyway, I had to stop recording there to re-record to ascertain that I don't have a speech lag because that would be a real bummer. But we don't have a speech lag, so I'm in. Let's move on. Okay, settle real quick or else sorcery. Ish, as in, yo, like, um, I don't, I, literally, I do not know. Except, I think I know. But let's, let's get into the gist of why I don't know anything, yet I do. I'm a Christian, I, I do imagine that's been evident this entire time. If at all it hasn't, then I don't know what I've been doing and, uh, you know, to whom, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Don't come at me like a ton of bricks, Wi-Fi, please, I switched you off, because then you guzzle my battery like bad gas. Mamelang, alright? I'm on my period. That information is relevant. I started yesterday. I am broke, I am poor, and I'm going through a weird time. I ca I don't have anything to myself. Not a single rand. Not a single unit of currency in whichever nation's currency may be potentially made available for me. I'm just with zero rands and zero cents and zero dollars and zero euros to my name. I also have a weird family that are apathetic in ways that are frankly unconscionable, but... Thank God that when my father and my mother forsake and neglect me so horrifically as this, God got my back. But let's just put that out there that being on my period with no money means that I gotta scratch around all over the show to find just like tampons hanging around. And I also gotta scratch around all over the show to find painkillers for my period. I will tell you a story. When I was a teenager, the first time I discovered that it was possible to overcome period pains, um, I imagined I happened upon a heavenly, uh, uh, you know, encounter. Yeah, 
I was hanging out with my cousin and a friend and our friend. She was more my cousin's friend than mine. But anyway, we were three girls hanging out and it was during the school holidays. All right. This I'm actually getting a glitch and a twitch. I don't know. Um, what shall I do? You know, let me let me switch off this phone and then switch it on again. And then maybe the glitch and the twitch will go away. What do you think? Do you think that's a thing? Hmm? Do you think that might work? Like, I don't know. I just saw a glitch in a twitch and it just made me so uncomfortable. Like, as uncomfortable as settle right now or else witchcraft. I'm just like, stop. I'm uncomfortable with that, but it doesn't really matter because people in the occult have no care in the world about disquiet because they don't even imagine that there's going to be a horrific end to all of their deeds. They just carry on doing what they want to do, so. And guys, okay, let me switch off my phone and then on, on again. Shall I? Shall I? Do you think it's going to make a difference? Uh, look, we're, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. If we encounter a glitch and a twitch again, I see what's going on here. You know what? Like, stop. We're going to stop. Okay, we restarted the phone, all right? Let's just hope for the best here. Yeah. I started with this filter and I'm finishing off. Hopefully that today's message is not going to be lengthy. But I doubt it. I do. I seriously doubt it. But whatever. It is what it is. Okay. I was telling a story. What's going on over here? You see, do you see the glitch and the twitch that I'm talking about? Let me see if I just abandon the filter and just go to another camera that doesn't give me problems and see if I don't. Because I just want to be able to talk without distractions, okay? Hi, hey, let me just talk, and Jay. Let me just talk, alright? Whatever happens, happens. This environment is cool enough for my phone to not overheat. Anyway, yes, when I was a teenager... We were hanging out with my cousin during the school holidays with this friend of hers and I was on my period. My period has been, ever since I could remember, just horrific, okay? Like pain from here to Timbuktu. My period pains have been ridiculous all my life. The only time that I didn't really have a problem with period pains was when I was on the contraceptive pill. But we are not on that uh, presently. Uh, but yeah, prior to that, I, I would just get this like slicing and dicing, stabbing pain that would just linger for like two, two and a half days. And I, I would just feel like death warmed up. I would feel like death warmed up. I remember when I was in primary school, one of my sister's friends did not write an exam. And this was before I started my period. She did not pitch for exams and said that the reason she didn't rock up was that she had period pains. And uh, they basically said, no, you were absent, you failed, you essentially now have to repeat the grade because you did not rock up to an exam. It does not count as a true sickness to have period pains. Felt kind of sad for her, whatever, until I got my period and I experienced that pain and I was like, yes, yeah, like it. I understand why that chick didn't go to school. But I also understand why the teachers refused to give her amnesty because there's a way around them, right? It's not like cancer or whatever. But here it is that I'm now a, a young girl, having gotten her period and everything. And I'm hanging out with two of my friends and I just, I can't be myself, I can't be lively, I can't talk. I'm basically on a deathbed walking around Soweto and it was just rough. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't deal. I just couldn't deal. I was in a severity of pain and I had to just be normal. So we hang out at this chick's place, the mom of this girl, then is like, alright, I'm done, mom. Are you okay, young girl? Are you alright? And I'm like, absolutely not. I'm not okay. And then her daughter is like, yeah, mom, she's been feeling like trash pretty much the whole day. Uh, she says that she's got period pains. And her mom was like, going, I know, I'll give her something for that. So the mother gives me these two painkillers, I swallow them. And it's like angel music played, like, oh, in the sky I could hear it audibly, I promise you. It was audible. Uh, I discovered that there were, I didn't have to do this. At that stage, I'd already been a, a young girl that got a period perhaps like for two years. And I started my period when I was 14 or 13 going on 14 in grade 8. First day of high school literally was my first day of my period. Like, could you choose a worse time? Yeah, uh, but I was at this stage like 16 or something. Okay, so I had endured two years of torture taking nothing for my period pains. I would just go through it. I would go to school. I would drag my body. The whole day would suck. I remembered what happened with my sister's friend who has failed because she skipped an exam because of period pains. 
And for two years, I just, I dealt. I, I took it. I took it. I took it bravely. And I would rock up for test exams and everything because I'm not about to fail my future because of this hindrance that happens for two and a half days of my month. The whole period cycle is not painful, just the first two and a half days. Um, after that, then it's, it goes swimmingly. Okay, very well. Mm. Here lies this uh, friend's mom offering me period pain, not period pain pills, but just pain pills. I take them and then within like half an hour, I'm right as rain. I'm energetic. I'm good. There's no pain. And I was like, what? What in the world? Like, I didn't have to go through all that. All I needed was some Panado. All I needed was some Mapradol. All I needed was some Gen Paint. Whatever is an over-the-counter thingy, my Bobby. I could just take that, Grandpa. Yeah, for the duration of time when I'm going through this nonsense. And nobody told me. Like, why didn't anybody told me? I just felt like it was such news. It was so newsworthy that period pains don't have to just sit there. They don't have to linger. Like, you don't have to just take them in your stride. You absolutely don't have to take them in your stride. When I discovered through uh, this friend's mom that really it doesn't have to end like that. It, like, it does not have to end in tragedy. Yeah, it does not have to end in a person being mowed to the ground and skipping exams. I felt like people had just withheld information from me for two whole years. Like, two whole years. Like... How did this not cross anybody's mind when I was walking around them like a zombie? That, hey, I've got a panada. Hey, I've got grandpa. Hey, I've got mapradol. Hey, I've got... Like, how did that not occur to me? Why didn't teachers be like, go to the, uh, the, the staff little dispensary, the, the you know, the, the sick room. Go to the sick room and ask for Santiniana aspirin, whatever, paracetamol. Yeah, and you'll be right as rain. Why did teachers just watch me walk around like an, a geriatric crunched up you know like um like i've got a hunchback and unable to like be straight faced wobbly legged just pining all day like why did they just take that in their stride why didn't anybody say anything why did why didn't any of these females that in and of themselves are actually getting their period say god but really it doesn't have to be like this like it doesn't it doesn't have to end that way you don't have to experience this you see the bible says it is written in hosea 4 8 that my people perish for a lack of knowledge, okay? And because you have not loved knowledge, I will then like slice and dice you and your kids off from a promise or something. I'm of course paraphrasing that, taking it a little bit with random other replacements of other strange words. But bottom line is, people perish when they don't know understanding. They just go through like a treachery of pain. Without realizing that really it doesn't have to end like this. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. This is not a... It's, it's not necessary to just endure certain things. All you need to do is gain... You know that saying, knowledge is power. Gain knowledge and you're good. Like things don't have to be so bad. Mm. So here it is. And I'm the 16-year-old girl having discovered this wealth of knowledge. This, this, just these, these copious textbooks. These theses. These dissertations that I am reading of the fact that all throughout the ages, ever since the invention of NLG6, period pains did not have to stay the horrific nightmare that they initially were. And yet I don't know. I was like a biology student for crying out loud. And yet that wasn't even raised in biology that you really don't have to go through this. It's, it's not necessary. You, you don't have to feel like your period is the end of your life. It's not necessary. Anyway, information was withheld from me. And I felt cheated for two years because I endured horrific periods for two whole years. I mean, 365 times two. That's just so long. But nobody told me. Nobody. Until I, during one school holiday, dragging myself like an old woman through the streets of Soweto. Somebody's mama was like, are you okay, dear child? You look like you're out of it. And then the daughter's like, yeah, mom, she's been going through it like this whole time on the lady period pains and then she gives me two little painkillers the green i remember the color because everything of that moment was memorable yeah she gives me these two ugly tasting green pills and my oh my queen never again in my life since that date never again in my life literally i kid you not i am not exaggerating never again in my life since that 60 i was 16 years old some fateful june holidays never again did i ever endure all that which goes bump in the night around my period forever like never again did i enjoy the thing that goes bump in the night because i'm in my period i'm on my period never again did i have to rock up at school feeling like trash the whole day not able to do anything not able to smile having to listen in classes while just in like enduring all this pain never again it, it literally i kid you not 
I never again experienced 48 hour long cramps, pains that are just ceaseless ever again. Because the moment they reared their ugly head, I popped something. I've been popping two little green pills or a grandpa, a panado, whatever. Paracetamol, aspirin, give it to me. My Pradol, gen pain, whatever might be the pill in question. Yeah, I've been popping that. The moment, the stabbing, the slicing, the dicing, the bombing in my uterus, in my womb area, in that general cervical area. Yeah, all that stabbing activity, making like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Never again did I have to experience that. I would stop it dead in its tracks. Look at me, not perishing anymore. Because I gained knowledge. Hallelujah. What was the knowledge? That you really don't have to go through this. It's not. It's, it's entirely unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Yeah. But for the first two years of me being a young lady that goes on her period, I suffered hell on earth for 48 hours, maybe more. Just because nobody said anything to me. Don't nobody tell me jack. And so I took it. Praise the Lord. Look at that. Look at my this filter falling off. Anyway, whatever. Mm. Mm-hmm. This filter. How nasty. There we go. Recovered. Mm. I came back up again. I was defibrillated from the precipice of death each new period cycle. I only experienced half an hour, perhaps 25 minutes of period pains. I popped a pill and within half an hour, perhaps 25 minutes, the pains were gone. I would then pop a new pill the moment it was rearing its ugly head again because that's the thing about period pains. You take a grandpa, a panada, whatever you take, okay? And then eight hours later, nine hours later, it's out you're making like a peeping tom trying to like stare at you again while you're wearing nothing. I need the bathroom. What's up? My phone has cooled down so switching it off and on again helped. And the glitch in the twitch has also stopped. There was clearly something wrong. Satan was all up in my roll. Anyway. Mm. The filter will keep falling every time I take a sip, sip of my coffee so let's just deal and accept. Also let's deal and accept with the fact that my shirt is creased. I shall highlight that again. Did I make mention of my white car sunscreen? That's also another thing. Moving on, here it is that I <clears throat> discovered that I can cure my period pains with just a, a, a pill. And that made me just realize why it is that those teachers that refused to give amnesty to the young woman, the young girl, who made a decision not to write an exam because of period pains. Yeah, they were women and they understood that girl. All that was needed there was an ibuprofen. All you needed was a paracetamol of sorts, panado, aspirin, Gen pain, whatever might be the analgesic in question of choice, that's all that was needed. And 25 minutes recovery time is also all that's needed. So frankly, you're just lazy. You could have just done that. Pop a pill. You have a mama, don't you? She should have told you. Take a pill. You have sisters, don't you? Yeah. You have other females in these streets that are with this knowledge uh, and yet they were hoarding it so boohoo you didn't write an exam repeat, repeat the grade because this it is what it is mm. yeah okay ever since i came upon that information through the friend or the, the mother of my friend who gave me those two ugly tasting beautiful green pills ever since then never again in my life in the remaining span of time that would exist all the way up until my 40th year of life would I ever experience lingering 48 hour cramping stabbings, flattening as with a steamroller over my cervix type pain for 48 hours? Never again did I ever have to endure that. Of course, there was a season when I didn't have them because I was on some pill. But afterwards and before then, it was just hell on earth for five seconds and then I overcame. I recovered. Excuse me? What? What? Anyway, sorry, I got distracted because I've got a strange distracting family. They are weird. And hey, like, never again am I giving my cell phone device to somebody who deleted all my content at some point on my cell phone device. Not only that, when there's like people that are not using their cell phones as at present and you want to use mine to send an email, I apologize. There are like two other people in the house that you can ask that favor from. You know when you've been sabotaged from like here to Timbuktu? You be careful. Like, that's what I said. My people perish for lack of knowledge. I got distracted. Somebody wanted to use my phone. The same individual of which sabotaged my phone. Last time they were with access to my phone, they deleted 
everything on it like everything and they just want me to just give me give them my cell phone device for what there are other people in the house that aren't presently recording a video on their phones right at this very moment as i am busy doing this message that i am doing right now that you can just ask to borrow their phones lend their phones and yet you don't y'all need to know like people in the occult or people that are sabotaging the, the, the people of god people that are going out of their way to harass the living daylights out of god's servants they will hmm, have a straight face while they are mowing you flat to the ground to finish you off but experience is power knowledge is power god's people perish for a lack of it and when you have knowledge upon gathering insights you can then make informed decisions and know when to say no know when to say to a person can i please your phone use your phone i need to send an email in email i really urgently need to use your phone but there's two other people in the house that are just sitting with their phones charging on the side over there that you can use the phones to do that plus you've got your own phone why do you need mine what are you gonna do distract the work i'm doing i'm working y'all need to learn how to discover when somebody or a bunch of people are trying to make you quickly settle or quickly be derailed from the work that you're doing in Christ, that they might finish you off. They will invest in some other slithering strategy to make you just shut up already. Know when to say no. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Let's move on. I discovered this thing that I discovered with the painkillers and I realized that indeed teenage girls and beyond pass away from pain for two, three days of their lives every single month because they don't find out that you don't gotta. Mm. We're done. I don't know why she did that. I don't know why she used that trick on me again, thinking that it would suffice. Like you're not distracting my ministry. Is that basic? Go ask the mother. Go ask the mother. Go ask the mother to use her cell phone, to send an email from her cell phone. You who act as if though you don't have a smartphone in your possession. Go ask her because my cell phone device is off limits. You are never going to touch it again literally never let's move on okay <clears throat> anyway this whole experience this whole situation made it such that i would never like i said ever again ever 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 yes i'm scratching my ear because i get to ever again ever right out period pains there's no reason there is no need never ever 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 again in my uneasy life will i ever ride out period pains ever again and never again indeed did i ever need to i never needed to not for longer than just the first five minutes and i can tell that they're kicking from the inside of my baby like a baby except a really rough and a violent one yeah then i would just nip that in the bud with some paracetamol or something been taking painkillers for two and a half days of my months ever since and they've worked wonders they have conquered my disquiet and made me write exams only saddened or disquieted by the fact that I don't remember what I studied, but not so much by the fact that my cramping stomach is the bane of my existence. Periods never became a problem ever again. Like, ever. Until now. Yeah. They never became a problem all the way throughout that entire circumstance until now. My life is a living testimony and a living epistle I intend to become. Before God, that I might help you gauge... I just like period pains really frankly all these witches in these streets you don't gotta ride them out you don't gotta take them in your stride you don't gotta settle for jack you just need an analgesic okay here it is that last night i'm on my period but i'm in a time of my life that is un un uncharacteristic to any other time of my life never in my life have i been so forsaken and abandoned that nobody would give me two Panados, two comprals, two ibuprofens, two one grandpa. Never in my life have I ever not had access to pain medication on my period. For the two and a half days that I would be enduring this calamitous, nightmarish experience in my belly, never in my life have I ever, like, proper, even throughout my sorrow, even throughout my persecution, never until post my 40th birthday did I ever have to experience what I went through. And the memory of it was just horrific, okay? What I went through from the ages of 13 and a half to 16. Again, I never thought I would ever have to ride out period pains in my life, like ever, again. Because 
I mean, how much is a grand pa? Three rand fifty for crying out loud at the garage, one sachet. So four of them for over the like five of them, maybe six. Yeah, of them over a span of two and a half days. That 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 won't set you back more than twenty bucks. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I could go on. Never in my life have I ever been just left out on a limb so horrifically, so treacherously, and so devastatingly as this to a point of not having painkillers on my period. This is the first. What I'm trying to help you understand is that the wicked get to a point where they're so desperate. They go so low to force you to do things that you don't want to do. That you will not be able to take an ibuprofen when you've got stabbings and slashings and Texas Chainsaw Massacre on your stomach, in your belly, across your cervix, in your uterus, just dicing away at your womb. Yeah. Mm. They will endure you through that in order to force you to finally do what they want you to do. You will be abandoned to a point of reigniting or re-experiencing things that you never thought you'd ever go through again ever since you were 16, but now you're like 40. You are 40. You are 40 years old. And something that you have quelled ever since the age of 16 will literally rear its ugly head and tempt you to settle real fast and real furious lest you should endure another 24 hour period <laughs> another 24 hour cycle mm -hmm. with cramps in your stomach that feel like the texas chainsaw massacre that's the occult for you that's witches witches are like periods witches are eradicatable they're easy to deal with but sometimes when you don't have knowledge you just ride them out for two and a half days feeling like death warmed up that's what's good but God gives you wisdom and says, really, it doesn't have to be like this. Panado. It's that, and it's cheap. Girl. Grandpa, I'm not that compral. Anything. My paid, my pain, my pradol, ibuprofen. And if you don't have it in your own possession, ask somebody's mama. Ask somebody's, like, grandmama. Go to the school sick room. They will give you an aspirin. Most people tend to be willing to just part ways with two little pillikis, like painkillers that are over the counter from their purses. Ask a Nesco, a next door neighbor, do you have ibuprofen? Do you have grandpa? Do you have the son? And they will just give you a panada. When I was in Naturina, there was a lady that lived in the main house that I was like suffering severely from period pains. And I was like, oh my goodness, life sucks. And she was like, it's alright, it's alright, it's alright, I've got panadas. Panadas suck, they don't work as well as uh, you would adore for them to work because they're kind of weak but it was it was enough to subside what was going on inside me they don't quite have the power mm, of grandpa but it made the pain less than what it is that it was because i'm one of those girls that will go through periods period pains sorry like i'm dying like i've been in a multi-car vehicle pileup and like there's still a truck on my chest like my period pains are horrific they are horrific and they've never stopped being horrific they're the kinds that can cause a girl to understandably skip an exam but it doesn't have to be that way. Like the pain is excruciating, we get it, but really, it, it really does not have to be that way. Like my period pains are so bad that I feel as if though even though I've never been a mother, I know what it's like to give birth. Because when that blood is coming out, you feel like you're pushing something out of your stomach and you will feel both constipated, however needing to poop, right alongside somebody suctioning something out of your belly without your permission. It, it feels like a forced abortion, I don't know. It feels like forceps in your stomach, I'd add, in, in your womb area, in your uterus. Like, it just feels like somebody is, it puts scissors in there and it's like doing this and just cutting inside. Like, hey, it, it's, women would know, okay? There are women who are blessed in these streets and don't really have those kinds of hemorrhaging periods. You feel like you are hemorrhaging, just like it. But others like me, um, but others like those that are blessed in these streets don't know what it's like. Yeah. When your period is over, <clears throat> you sometimes imagine you've got like, a keloid scar just left in your uterus. Yawning, gawking at the uh, environment on some look what I've left got over with. A wound. But at least now it's healed. Until next time. Those are period pains for you. Witches. Members of satanic organizations, they are exactly like periods. They will punch you from the inside of your stomach and you will feel like there is no way out. In the season of hell that lingers for two and a half days out of an entire month, you will want to die. You will feel like it's over. You will feel like you can't do anything else. You will imagine it's okay for you to skip exams because of this rubbish. You will anticipate that, frankly, if at all, you'd never had children, you have known what it feels like to give birth with no epidural. You will have experienced pain at the uppermost height of it, 
And so therefore can't nobody tell you jack. Yes. Yeah. But they don't gotta stay. Those pigs. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. And so because you have not lo loved knowledge, I will also cut off your children from the land. Amen. Like, if you don't want to grab an ibuprofen, honey, you are without excuse when you refuse to write your exam. Teachers, rightfully, have abandoned your cause because you should have just popped a panado and come to write. So you didn't study. That's the problem. The issue is that you didn't study. And so because you didn't study, that's why you failed. You didn't fail your exam because you had periods. You failed because you didn't study. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. You failed the exam because you did not study and used your period as an excuse. Yes. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness to steal your crown away from you. Don't allow people wanting to use your cell phone device conveniently when they've got a functioning smartphone, a laptop, alongside two individuals with their own smartphones in the house to take your phone or to right slap bang in the middle of you recording the message of life. Don't fall for it. Recognize the ibuprofen, swallow it, and then eradicate this pain. It's that basic. Baloi, you are a wrestling, horrific, nightmarish, feeling like an abortion your back street, period pain cycle. All you are is a fleeting pain that people don't really have to endure, but if they insist on riding it out there without excuse, when during that season, they drop the ball. And that's exactly what happens. For the larger majority of your life, well, it's, uh, unless of course you're me, <laughs> uh, witches just come and go, flying just like birds next to you, squawking, making a very loud, boisterous sound, following which they just kind of disappear because they tend to be one-hit wonders. They tend to do drive-by shootings. They tend to have no regard, these psychopaths, do you understand? For the fact that this here is a stranger, so I shouldn't be bewitching it. They are one-hit wonders, yeah. They work in your office for five seconds and then they've bewitched you who they found sitting there. Yeah, they're fleeting, they're passing, they tend to have new victims somewhere in the future and you will be something that they drive by shot. But if you don't dodge that bullet, you are without excuse. If you don't duck that, you're without excuse. If you don't make like a nice little netball player without a foot fault and score a goal, you are without excuse. If you don't pamper them with humiliation, you are without excuse. If you don't seek the Lord's face to enable you along in the cause, and you're striving against these satanic minions, you are without excuse. Because you have ibuprofen. These satanese get a period pain. That's all they are. I promise you right this particular moment, all they are are a stab in your stomach feeling like a botched backstreet abortion that is so temporary that within 25 minutes of consuming a grandpa, they're gone. Okay, let's drink coffee again. Hallelujah. Last night was my first night on my period. I had to scrummage all over the show to find tampons first and foremost. There was one here, one there, everywhere a tampon. It was like Old McDonald's farm of searching for tampons. Old McDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm there was a tampon. E-I-E-I-O. With one in the bag and another in the box. Another one in the makeup cabinet and another one in the shelter for the toilet. And another one in the bathroom cabinet and the other in the bathroom. And another one in the kitchen. There, there, and it was screaming, I'm there for you, Carabo. Old McDonald's had a farm. E -I, -E -I, -O. I had to locate tampons that were just scattered across the house because somebody forgot them in a bag. Somebody, I personally, just kind of left one in a container, in a makeup box, in a this and that. And yeah, scratching around for tampons because I didn't have any. Y'all need to understand, my family have never gotten to this low. You know that, 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 that game in the Caribbean? Mm. The glitch and the twitch is there because of refreshing some data. I don't know what's going on with this phone. Nandaba. But my prayer is that my um, sound is audible and never mind that. But that there's no speech lag. If there is, we'll deal with it when we encounter it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, my family have been horrific. They've been nasty. They've been unsupportive and frankly just ridiculous this entire time. But I have never had to play Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm there were no tampons, E-I-E-I-O. But she looked in the makeup cabinet and looked in a jacket, found it in a shoe, found it in a box, found it in a kitchen cabinet. There, there, yeah, scratching around to find tampons. I was out just singing Old MacDonald's had a farm, and on that farm there were no tampons, but Garbo found them. Yeah, they've never gone that low. I've always had a box of tampons. I've always had 
grandpa, at least for my parents. Every so often, my headaches are ignored, but at least for my parents, I have had grandpa. Or compral, or my anything, whatever it might be, this, uh, the, the analgesic of choice. I have, in these 10 years of sorrow, not had to endure what I went through for two years before finding out the miracle of painkillers. And I also certainly never had to use, uh, sorry, never had to face the risk of using toilet paper for a pad. Because old McDonald's had a farm and on that farm there were no tampons. But here a tampon, there a tampon, everywhere a tampon, tampon. I found tampons, but like sparsely scattered across everything. Makeup boxes, bags, parking, jacket pockets, purses, wallets. Yeah, bathroom cabinets. Yeah, that, that's how I, I located enough tampons to get me to the end of my period cycle just scratching the whole house and i am concerned that since i have scratched in every crack and crevice that i could scratch for tampons next month it's gonna be like a whole thing again yo <laughs> mamela ne <laughs> imagine me getting married to a man thank only because i had to find tampons hidden in an old makeup box that I have not dug my fingers in in two years. And then as a result, I'm just gonna go and take the wedding proposal of some filthy animal because I'm sick and tired of not having tampons. When that same animal put me in a position to need tampons, never mind everything else. Okay, yeah, because I don't have a comprol, because I don't have a grandpa on my period, to not have to deal with that backstreet abortion that happens over two days, in my uterus? Yeah. I'm gonna go and just take the wedding proposal of some nightmarish man. Yeah. My periods are painful. But I would imagine a knife in my heart, a machete on my neck, an axe in my skull, poison in my drink, that probably hurts a lot more. And it's fatal. In a way that periods just aren't. Yeah. Mmm. Period pains are painful and they feel life-threatening i promise you if you have experienced them you would know you feel like you're dying they give casket rip vibes but you discover once you've gone through that season that you were just frankly a hypochondriac relax god but this was never gonna kill you but the pain felt murderous at the time that you were experiencing it but you see there's a difference between a pain that feels murderous a pain that feels homicidal versus one that actually is and if at all, in order to escape the homicidal, pseudo-homicidal pain, if at all for you to escape the pseudo-homicidal pain, you then are going to flee to the to the truly homicidal pain of being with a filthy man. <laughs> Girl, you have chosen a machete on your neck so that you can have ibuprofen. <laughs> My people perish for lack of knowledge. And because you have not loved knowledge, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is gonna cut you and your babies off from the land. Okay. Mm. Last night, for the first time in how many years? I'm not doing the math, please. I'm not doing it. In over two decades, for the first time, in over two decades, I experienced what I experienced from grade 8 to grade 10 around my period. I remembered what it's like. I remembered what it's like. This SIM data keeps on refreshing. I'm thinking of just taking out my SIM card because because it's causing a glitch and a twitch. Give it again to the SIM card tray. One second. Very well, cool. Yeah, no more refreshing of SIM data. I can see the SIM card from the tray. Because that's causing the glitch and the twitch. So if there's no SIM card, I don't need to be dealing with any of that. Yeah. Let's put it there. We'll put it back in a little later. And let's wear the earring again, because y'all know you need something sharp in order to access that SIM card, right? If not, probably using a phone from 1992. It's okay. Anyway. Woo! I apologize. This is another look. Moving on to the dotty look. There we go. Recovered. I'm sorry. I don't know what you saw over there, but probably nothing intense. I have a bruise on my leg. You might have seen that. Okay. Because I keep on bumping into stuff in that squeezed up environment where I stay. Hmm. You saw the makeup be removed. Anyway, yeah. Last night, for the first time in over two decades, I experienced what it's like. I, 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 I was taken back down memory lane. Really, without even asking for it. I didn't ask. For a reimagination of my life, I apologize. I apologize yet again. I wanted to like cleanse my screen after this thing fell on my lap. It may very potentially have gone all blurry and fingerprinty or leg printy. I don't know. 
Yeah, moving on. For the first time, what in the world is this and why has it been unhinged? I, I don't know. Like, stuff just falls. Mm. Okay, just put it on over there with the SIM card tray. Mm. Okay, cool beans and uh, banana peels. For the first time last night, okay, I experienced a most horrific night of sleeping. I experienced a most nightmarish night of sleeping. A most restless night of sleep. I was woken up, gangani, because of this like stabbing backstreet abortion sensation. The suction, this throbbing, pulsating, cancerous feeling, tumor like, random, scary, Texas, Texas chainsaw massacre pain. I endured it and I, I was emotional. I, I just felt like God, but why have you left me? Why have you forsaken me? Why don't I have painkillers? Why did I have to scratch for tampons from different portions of the house and of the shack and of my purses and of my jackets? Why did I, why, why, why are you allowing this to happen? And you know, when you're going through nonsense, the Bible says that we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Before you grumble at God and conclude that he don't live, he don't exist, he don't matter, you need to realize that, um, okay, you know those people who like to say, if God is so good, why is there so much horrificness in the world? Why is there so much terror on the planet? If God is so great, why is there war anywhere? Uh, I'm sorry, except I'm not. I don't have decor and my life sucks, so if I am burping, it is what it is. Okay. If God is so good, why do babies die? If God is so good, why is there so much poverty everywhere? If God is so good, you know those people? Yeah. The Bible says you must always be able to give an answer for the faith that you have in Christ, but do so in gentleness. So when people are like, if God is so good, is she good, is she good, if you're good, is you good, if you're good, is you good. This is what's good. This is what's, well, this is what's intense. Okay. Why don't I have tampons sufficiently and why don't I have analgesics for my pains during my period? I'll tell you, it's not because good abandoned or forsook me. It's because you are evil. Humanity, you are the problem. Don't you see? Like, you are the issue. That's why people ought not to walk away from Jesus Christ, who has warned you about this world. When they go through nonsense, the world hates disciples first and foremost. He puts that out there by this... Uh, can you in this world you will have much trouble that saith the Lord uh, but take heart of overcome the world he says that the world hates disciples they will throw you up there to the synagogues the day is coming when those who afflict you will do so thinking they're doing a service to God the world is just gonna hate you they're gonna like give you grief some of you they will afflict you all the way up until you die but you gotta come the cost of being a disciple so I mean forewarned is forearmed right so when you walk away from God because people do that which God said they would yeah throw you out synagogues, kill you thinking they're doing a service to God, persecute you. When they do that, you don't you don't then on that day get to be like, if good is you good. And if at all you claim to not have known what the Bible said, indeed, my people perish for a lack of knowledge and because you have not loved knowledge, I will cut off your children from the land. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. That when you peruse the things of Jesus Christ, when you interrogate him, you must count the cost of being a disciple. Because there will be many people on the last day that will say, Lord, Lord, and he will say, depart from me. Many are called, few are chosen. Parable of the sower. There are people who interrogate the things of God and never bear fruit. But there's only one guy that bears fruit 30 times, 60 times, and 100 fold over. One of the guys falls away because he hears the gospel, goes in one ear, goes out the next. The other guy hears the gospel and when they get persecuted, they fall away. The other guy hears the gospel and because of the cares of this world, riches and wealth, they can't be too serious with God. Like the rich man, very hard to follow Jesus because it's easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. But there is one guy who bears fruit in spite of persecution, who says to live as Christ but to die is gain that does not fall into does not chase after riches and so therefore falls into many temptations the person who holds fast to Christ no matter what and because of this guy everybody else is without excuse the guy with the gospel in one ear of the other no excuse the guy who falls away because they got hurt by some people no excuse and the guy who was not Luke was not was this genuine or sincere with Jesus because they were rather focused on just making money 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 to a point where they became a, an extortioner a launderer making a money launderer a racketeerer a briber and uh, just a, a random person into really unsavory business practices but hey they're in church every Sunday top of that all their wealth they acquired it through witchcraft rituals they've got a mum lumbo but hey they're Christian 
the Bible made it clear that, uh, you know, these people exist. And so you have a responsibility as a Christian to interrogate the scriptures, study real hard, study real hard to not be any of those guys who will say to the Lord, but did I not prophesy in your name and in your name did many mighty miracles and in your name did I not cast out demons? Because God is just going to tell them, depart from me, worker of what iniquity? I never knew you. Like it is written in, is it Titus um, 3.16? That by their works they display that they've never been born again. That they're reprobate. Like by their works. Like they claim to love the Lord. But by their misavancies, they evidence that they've never known him from a bar of soap. Yes. I actually want to read that, 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 that facet of God's word in Titus. Um, is it 3.16? Or, well, there is no 3.16. I am, I apologize. Um, it's 116. They prof okay, so it's Titus 116. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and, and unto every good work reprobate. So works evidence that they're not really saved. So when then people are like, you're really so good. Why so much evil in the world? Why so much evil? Why? When they're on that tip. Your answer is, honey, look, hey, they profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work a reprobate. God is not the one that's hurting me, it's them. If God is so good, why is there so much trouble and war in the world? If God is so good, why is there so much rubbish? Ah, oh, I can't agree. Yeah, God is good. He made creation and then afterwards he said, it is good. He's amazing. But we aren't. We are the reason why there's war in the world. We are the reason why people don't have tampons on their periods. We are the reason why people don't have painkillers on their period. We are the reason why kids are starving. Why the income distribution curve favors only 2% of the Earth's population. We are the reason why people are unemployed. And we are the reason why in families there are these strange anomalies and that you will have like a whole entire chunky business entrepreneur and ceo however with like a cousin and a sister that is living in a shack yeah we did that we we with our foolish hearts that have been darkened chased after creation to worship it instead of honoring the uh, creator we have rejected the truth of god we have received the truth in unrighteousness we had itching ears and gathered for ourselves a great number of teachers to teach us what our itching ears wanted to hear those among us who profess to know christ are always learning and never coming to a knowledge of truth we have a form of godliness that denies the power thereof we are the problem Wait, don't you see? You've gone so good with so much trouble in the world. Eve ate the apple, not God. Oh, and let me just correct that. Eve ate the fruit. We, we assume it's an apple. It could have totally been a strawberry. Okay. Eve ate the blueberry, not God. Eve was told by God, though. Don't. Adam and Eve were told don't eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And it's ate anyway. Some might argue, why did God put the tree there in the first place? Because God does not want robots. God wants people with free agency to honor him and worship him. He, it was a test. Judgment begins with the Lord Jesus Christ. The, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ's church. Judgment begins with the church. That saith the Lord in his word. Okay? Nobody successfully applies for a job or and uh, you know makes it like it gets a part in, a, in an act or a play a theatrical production unless they audition you don't just get picked up from the street and next thing you're playing juliet and romeo and juliet you gotta audition and we have to audition for heaven because we are fallen and so if god does not test our faith and if god does not test our hearts towards him we for the living daylights out of us don't make any sense making heaven at all if we have not denied this world and rejected it in favor of God and chosen him we don't get to enter in we don't get to knock on the door and be like look I've arrived <laughs> at the end of your life having lived a reprobate life with your works having displayed through them that you don't know God yeah we, we don't get to enter heaven after all that mm. so we got an audition and uh, Adam and Eve were given that tree in the garden in the center they're just hanging out yeah told however don't eat from it they could have chosen to obey God but they chose not to we're not robots, we've been given free agency that we might indeed be chooseful of God. Instead of just these like, da 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 da, uh, uh, zombie, eat, eat, eat. And we just like go to God because he called us, he like, you know, like pulled us as with like a tether around our hair, our, our necks, to just choose him. No, we gotta willingly and lovingly and joyfully and easily and with a burden that is light and a yoke that is easy, just gladly go out like that. But we don't. Adam and Eve were given a choice not to eat from the tree, but they ate those blueberries. Could be blueberries. 
Could be strawberries. Could be mangoes. We don't know. But hey, let's go with the apple. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what humanity does to you. That's what I'm getting at. You have a prerogative, a responsibility to study to show yourself approved. We know that the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can tell? Who can know it? Who can know it? We know that our most righteous works are like filthy rags. So wanna be altruistic, philanthropistic, philanthropy uh, laden human individuals in these streets out here in, in, in their like charitable work who give with one hand while the other hand is a glaring staring at what they're doing. God said, when you give on the left and on the right, make sure that the left or the right don't discover that you're giving. When you give with your right hand, make sure your left does not see and vice versa. But these people are happy to have cameras just kind of yawning, rolling, rolling, rolling. Lights, camera, action, look at me, I'm a philanthropist. Look at me, I've adopted 10 kids. Look at me, I'm Sandra D. Bursting with virginity. I won't go to bed till I'm lawfully red. It's me, I'm Sandra D. And God is going to be like, goodbye to Sandra D. Because everything is a facade. Even the most righteous works are like filthy rags, laden in them is selfishness, just a rooted desire for self-praise, adoration, exaltation. We are self-important. And so therefore, even when you give charitable actions to the human race, you are worthless. There is no one who does good, no, not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And what is imperative is to recognize that folly in oneself, the thing that makes you different from a self-important Sandra D is recognition that even your most righteous works are like filthy rags. Unfortunately, the majority of the human race don't get to that conclusion. People think they're inherently good. They think they're amazing, awesome. And so because they think they're as stellar and as spectacular as they are, they give only when their right hand sees what their left hand is giving. But back at the ranch, they've done a spell to be the messiahs of people. They have made sure with a God complex that nobody else is going to rock up and do this altruistic activity. Nobody else is going to be this philanthropist but me. Because it's human praise I'm looking for and not so much that you might please God. It is impossible to please him without faith. And faith is the kind of stuff that gathers for itself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves don't come in and steal. But a lot of people don't like to like store up treasures in an invisible heaven because nobody sees what I'm doing. Yeah, so you store them up on earth, and when you're storing stuff up on earth, you're going to very showy, very ornately, very ostentatiously and clamorously service the human race, while back at the ranch you're like a whole witch. Yeah, I mean, God sees he's not mocked. It's written in his word that do not be deceived, God is not mocked whatsoever, a man soweth, so too shall he reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption, but if you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life. The majority of the world just does not reap to the spirit, they reap to the flesh. They sow to the flesh, I uh, correct that, yeah, because the road is narrow that leads to life that few people find. So since most of us are on the narrow road, it is necessarily evident then that people are just going to throw each other over mountains. They're just going to throw each other over precipices. People are just going to keep on lambasting one another. So, boo, look at that. A war has broken out in the Middle East. Boo, look at that. A woman has been raped in the corner. Boo, look at that. Kids have been trafficked for prostitution. Boo, look at that. Carabo has no tampons. That has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with the fact that my family have left me to not have tampons. My family have left me to not have analgesics because of the fact that there is just this like menacing, ruminating general cause of sorcery trying to get me to just settle real quick with a menacing man. Because I get a painkiller. I mean, really, like, if you are going to go so low that you refuse a woman tampons around her period, honey, you are driving me to a man that he might provide for every last one of my needs. Matthew 24 being fulfilled. Here in Messiah, like old McDonald's farm of Messiahs. Old McDonald had a false church. E -I -E -I -O. And in that false church conglomerate, there were a whole bunch of Messiahs. E -I -E -I -O. With a Messiah here and a Messiah there. Here a Messiah, there a Messiah everywhere. A Messiah, Messiah. Old McDonald's had a fake church. E -I -E -I -O. And in this fake church, they kept on insisting that Christians trust in these false disciples. E -I -E -I -O. With the messianic complex, God complex there, and the messianic complex, God complex here. Here a God complex, there a messianic complex everywhere. I am a God, God complex. But God said in this old McDonald's farm, don't take them seriously when they say that I am, here I am, and everywhere. Because at the end of the day, if you don't see a lightning strike from the east to the west, you know that it ain't Jesus Christ. So you ignore them here 
and you ignore them there Say I'm sorry that's not Christ because the Lord is gonna come in a way that everybody sees So no thank you So old McDonald's had a God E-I-E-I-O And that God told him to study and show himself approved E-I-E-I-O And so Cran K said no thank you I'm good with your Messiah because I have one in heaven And he's already rescued me in 2011 So I'll pass on your messianic complex And your desire to rescue me little God I have a God in heaven and it's not you So please I'm okay even though I don't have tampons Cause my true Messiah will help me find them in my purse Until further notice God complex, they're everywhere they live among us. If God is so good, why is there so much trauma in the world? Because the world is full of traumatizing miscreants. Mutineers against other human beings. They just can't help but pull rugs from underneath people's feet. That's why the world is so troubled. The world is troubled, humanity, because you suck. God is the one that told you, just like he told Adam and Eve. Don't eat the blueberries. But Adam and Eve ate the blueberries. I mean, when the Lord tells you don't, and you do it anyway, I'm sorry, you're a disobedient child. You're an illegitimate, perhaps a prodigal at best, but largely lost. When God says, don't eat of the tree, and you eat, and then the tree eating behavior causes a breakout of hives in one corner of a school playground. And you're like, if God is so good, why is there so much pestilence? There is pestilence, honey, because you caused a breakout of hives in a corner by disregarding the fact that God said don't walk there, it's going to cause hives. We ignore God. He says don't murder, but we break out into the hives of war. He says don't commit adultery, but we break out into the hives of Corbella. He says don't lie, but we break out into the hives of bearing false witness against completely innocent souls. He says worship no other God but me, but then we break out into the hives of ancestral worship. You did it. Humanity, you, you. You did. You're the reason why there's so much calamity across the world. If God is so good, quiet, quiet, still yourself now. There, there. Relax. God is awesome. He will stay awesome. And if at all you're suffering a whole chunk, chances are some human being did it. Not God. The Lord is the one that gives a mother an instruction to love her child. And when she ch chooses not to, honey, you can't say that God sucks because my mama sucks. Like there's so many people with mummies that suck and yet they choose God anyway. So those who run into prostitution because my mama sucks, you are without excuse. If God is so good, why is it so much nasty? Yeah, we're nasty. We. The problem here is you and you and the you hoo, 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 and me. We are the issue. We are the reason why nothing is straight. Everything is crooked. Everything has fallen apart. I am without tampons because human beings bewitched me to take away my support on social media with those people that were happy to hand me over to a better existence. By giving me donations, that was blocked by witches. No, not God. And it was also blocked by the random incendiary buffoon that paid somebody at YouTube to keep on pressing a red ugly button so that I can't monetize my own channels. And then the ones who keep on sowing discord between brothers ascertaining that my mom does not care that I should have an LG6 or on my period alongside tampons. I am unemployed because some licentious, random, debilitating family member offered me a job and chose to take it away afterwards. Yeah, I am not unemployed because God sucks. I'm unemployed because people could have given me a job and chose not to. I'm unemployed because people blocked my prospects of getting employed. Yo, I am suffering because people did it. But you see, the beautiful thing about that all is that God also said, look, in this world you're going to have much trouble, Kurazi, but take heart, I've overcome the world. The Lord said that. Jesus Christ, Messiah. He's the one that made it evident to me and you and everybody else all around these streets that when the world suffocates you, don't suffocate them back. Do not repay evil for evil because that's the kind of stuff that causes wars and human trafficking and prostitution and sabotage and jealousy and narcissism. Yeah, don't do what the rest of them are doing. Just don't follow the grain. But people follow the grain anyway. But those of us who are rare, set apart, on the narrow road, that leads to life that few people find, we are given the Holy Spirit. He then enables us to put to death the deeds of the human race's natural inclination, natural general disposition. That which we default to, the sin nature, we conquer it by the Holy Spirit and we put to death the deeds of the body. So instead of insisting upon war, we are called the sons of God because we are peacemakers. Instead of insisting upon discord, peacemakers. You know, God says, if it is possible, strive to live at peace with everybody. We're given instructions. We try to make peace. But you don't want to hear it because you cause creation to groan because we are not yet revealed. 
That is what is going on over here. If God is your good grab, or if the Lord really has you big, go. Oh, I don't you have tampon. I don't have tampons because my mom, who can afford to help me out with them, just chooses not to. I don't have tampons because people blocked my provision through those who could sponsor me. I don't have tampons because YouTube refuses that I should monetize. I also don't have painkillers because that witch was an individual that could have given me a job chose not to. That's why I don't have tampons. I don't have tampons. Not because God did not enable tampons. I don't have them because people made sure that I will settle for a man by any means necessary, including the extraction of basic necessities like tampons and painkillers on your period. That's what I'm, I'm getting at. But you see, Jesus, you know that he got your bag. When in spite of the lack of tampons, you find them in a shoe. You find them in a makeup box. You find tampons just chilling in an old bag that you have not opened in a minute, but you know there's like three tampons in there. Christ has a way of providing for a saint of his during a time of dry, patchy and human indiscretion. When people are out just dropping bombs, God has a way of putting you in a bomb shelter where it is that you will have just enough. you like scant resources, like living hand to mouth while he judges a world of people that are trying to make you walk away from him because you don't have tampons. No, I don't not have tampons. I just have five or six for the duration of my period left. I don't not have tampons. I just have to, I just had to find them little compartments all over and i also don't have painkillers but i found an alternative y'all i'm trying to make a point at this particular juncture and i hope that i'm succeeding if i am not i do apologize my my whole entire intention is to succeed mm.